Hey everyone, today's video is about when they have a nightmare. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going. Oh, and before I forget, this is um, the guy's po, not you, POV, I mean. So enjoy. Let's go. Is it gonna be Arya? A hero? Ah, don't make me laugh. I looked around in some sort of white, seeing Wyon, or at least it looked like her. She had a more shadowy person starter. Her normal eyes were surrounded by dark red and black. She walked forward. You think you're a hero? That you're my hero? You're weak. You can even develop a quirk on your own. She pushed me back. Once you realize you never do this world any good, then you might actually do some good. She laughed insanely. She leaned in close. Bye bye. Izu. Izuku. Izuku? Wine shouted, shaking me. What? Babe, are you okay? You were shaking and talking in your sleep. You're scared the hell out of what? She yelled as I tackled her into a hug. She hugged me back, grabbing my back. Nightmare, huh? I nodded against her hair. She put my face back so she was looking me in the eyes. Well, nightmares aren't real. You're okay. I leaned in and kissed her. She of my back a little before once again pulling away. You want to talk about it? I nodded, slowly started to explain it to her as she sat and listened, which was all she needed to do now. Once I was done, she kissed my temple. Well, your nightmares are stupid. I would never say anything like that. I believe way too much in you and love you too much to even think about it. Bagukatsuki. I sat against the wall, tied up, watching the villains be Wyan. Every now and again, she was spitting up blood from getting kicked and punched in the gut. I, for once, was bowing my eyes out as I watched this. Let her go. She doesn't deserve this. I cried out. One of the villains looked at me before glancing back to the others and I would never had. The villain smirked as they walked out of the room. I thought maybe they were leaving her alone before they all walked back in with knives and slowly surrounded her. Wyatt, Wyatt, Wyatt. I shot at as I woke up. Mm. She grinned, feeling the book that had fallen her face up as she sat up. Paco. Why are you yelling? It's two in the morning. I pulled her in a kiss. When she pulled away, she could see the visible tears in my eyes. Immediately, her hand went to my cheek and rubbed the tears away. Katsuki Bago, why are you crying? She rarely used my full name unless she was extremely worried. I'm just... I hope you're okay. Why wouldn't I be okay? Darling, did you have a nightmare? I nodded. She closed her eyes before kissing me again. I wrapped my arms around her waist, deepening the kiss. When she pulled it back, she asked, Did that help? I nodded. You want to cuddle? I nodded again as we laid back down and she snuggled into my chest. Shota Riki. I looked around. At the darkly colored beach, the sand black and the water red. What the hell's going on? I thought, looking out into the water, as I saw a figure rise from it. The water looked to be coming from the rests. Once I stepped forward, I noticed the figure looked identical to Maya. The figure drowned down and looked like they were drowning before rising back up in front of me and making me fall back into the black sand. Why? Why didn't you save me, Shoto? 
She sat, getting closer, as more rat jumped from her ass. Shoto. 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 Lion sat, carefully shaking me. Are you okay? You're scaring me. I immediately sat up once I realized I was away. I grabbed Lion's rests, looking at them. So what are you... When was the last time? She was shocked. I had asked so suddenly. Why are you... Just... Just answer me. I pleaded. She sighed. About three months ago. I took a breath of relief. It wasn't the best. But at least it had been a couple of months since it happened. I placed my temple against hers. Rubbing my thumbs over her scars. Sorry, are you okay? You seem more scared than you normally do. She started out. I simply shook my head. It's nothing, Wyan. Let's go back to sleep. She nodded, holding me close as we laid back in her bed and fell asleep. Think you come in Ari? I was running through a forest, trying to run from something. What that something was, I couldn't tell yet, but I knew I had to run from it. Eventually, I tripped over a branch, falling face first into the dirt of the forest. Get him. Wyon. I turned my head back, recognizing the HC colored girl standing in the middle of her four brothers, who were slowly getting closer. Rep his head. Off, for all I care. Just get him. B1 punched me, making my face go further into the ground. Slowly but surely, they all attacked me. Then it all went dark. Ah, I yelled, setting up and looking around. Seeing I was still in Wyland's room, I got up, starting to change before she woke up, but I wasn't fast enough. Mm, Kami, why are you... Stay back. I sat as she started to reach towards me. She seemed shocked and fearful. Baby, are you okay? What's wrong? I just, I need to go. Soon enough, I made my way out of the door. Wine closed behind me. Thank you, slow down. She grabbed my wrist, making me sob, and pulled me into a hug. She ran her hand through my hair, soothing me. What happened? I just... I... I got scared for a minute. Why did you get scared? After a few moments of silence, I started to explain the drink to her. She pulled me to face her and kissed me. Well, that would never happen. Let's get your sugar fried brain to bed. It's your Kirishima. It was raining. I was at a funeral. Everyone was in black, the only color being the rosas that were near the coffin. I started to walk forward when the world around me turned black and I couldn't see anything. When the world came back, I was no longer at the funeral, but at a graveyard, a few feet away from a gravestone that had rose in front of it. I walked forward slowly. Once I reached it, I bent down and read the name. Why, Ellen? No. I said, fully falling to my knees and onto the ground. No, this can't be happening. No. I repeated as I woke up. As I kept repeating it, I didn't notice. Wow was still upside me. And that she had woken up. Babe, what are you doing? It's... She looked over to the clock. It's 4 a.m. We have school in a few hours. I kept repeating no until she finally shook me, knocking me out of my trance as I looked over to her. I quickly poured her on top of me and hugged her. Wow, it's your all. She whispered yelled as I placed my hat into the crook of her neck. What's wrong? You woke up saying no, and now you're being clunky. Wait. She sat, setting up, and looking me in the eye. Baby, did you have a nightmare? Maybe. G1 
she gave me a sad smile as she gave me a peck on the laps. If I cuddle you, can we go back to sleep? Mm-hmm. Good, because we have a test tomorrow. Well, shit. Either then, yeah. Why was laying there in a hospital bed, where I sucked up to her as she was on life support. I was standing in front of her, her mother and brother the size of her, crying along with me. Soon, the doctor came in and walked all over to her, mom. They started speaking to each other as her mother broke down more and had more tears in her eyes. I saw her mother look to her brother as he nodded, and he nodded to the doctor. Walking over to the machine, he looked at them the last time, before pulling the blood, making me a flat line as the world turned white. I woke up panting, while I snuggled against my chest, still sleeping soundly, which made me smile with how cute she looked in that moment. Though if I told her she was cute while she was awake, then she might tap down me telling me to shut up. As I tracked her hair, she did eventually wake up, yawning quietly as she looked up at me. Tanya, what are you doing up? I'm surprised you haven't gone back to sleep yet. I was tired around the bad why I need a good amount of sleep in the night. I chuckled, kissing her forehead. I just I don't know dream, that's all. I suppose your presence calmed me down. She smiled, leaning up and kissing me. Well, I'm glad I was able to help. But can we actually go back to sleep? Of course, love. To Marcy Garaki, I was in a fight with some hero near the box door. Why it worked out? I didn't think any of it. Just trying to win the battle and not get arrested. Tuma, I heard her yell. I looked over to see her standing outside. Why? I was about to say, before they her punched me. She ran back inside, before I pushed her back into the building, beside the bookstore. And as it looked like they were defeated, and as the building started to fall, to where is the place? Why and where that? Why, no. I yelled, just as the building was about to hide. I walk up to the sound of Wine's alarm clock. There goes having a good nap. I thought as I got up, quickly making my way to go get Wine from work. I normally use that alarm to let me know she would be home soon, but because of my nightmare, I had to check on her to know she was actually all right. Once I arrived, I saw the building was all right, and when I walked out and harmed, good. I told myself, as I walked up to her, she ended up on me and to me, not paying attention. Oh, sorry, Tuma. I thought you said they weren't going to pick me up anymore. I know. But I had a weird dream, just wanted to make sure you were right. She smiled, kissing my cheek. I'm glad you were worried about me. Now, can we go back to my place and eat? I nodded. Dabby. In front of me is the Wyon, in a hero costume with her parents waiting for her. Um, I'm sorry, Dabby. I want to be with my family again. She sighed as she started to walk off. I grabbed her wrist. Please, Wyon, think about this. I did, Dabby. Now I have to go. Baby, please. I already made my choice. Goodbye, Dabby. With that, she pulled her rest out of my grab and saw not walk over to her parents. I fell to the ground. She was one of the only people I could trust, and now she leaves. I felt myself breaking down as the world went quiet. When I woke up, I looked around, seeing ghosts in my room and not outside. I noticed why Anne was next to me. I started worrying. I quickly got up, throwing my clothes on as I started out to the bar area. There sat Wyan talking with Togan twice, laughing and having a normal conversation. Thank God she's still here. When she saw me, she smiled and got up, running over to me and hugging me. Morning, she said, looking up at me. I smiled back at her, ruffling her hair. 
Did you have a good sleep? Mm-hmm. You? Uh, could have been better. But it's okay now since you're here. She giggled, giving me a quick kiss before going back and talking to Daka and twice. About who knows what. I'm so lucky to have her. I thought as I walked back to bed. Meet the monoma. I stood there in a shop was surrounded by multiple people, and soon the music started up. The chapel doors slowly opened and revealed Bayan in a beautiful wedding dress. Starting to walk down the aisle as I had always pictured. Once she stood in front of me, she seemed like she was alright, but still nervous, which was expected. We are gathered here today to celebrate the union of Nita Monima and my Baka. The preacher looked at me. Do you take wine and is your lowly, but a wife? I do. He turned wine. Do you take? I can't. With that, she ran out. When I woke up, I found my face, feeling the tears on it. As I reached for my phone to call Wyatt. The phone rang for a few moments before she picked up the phone. Baby, what are you doing up? Uh, um, I just wanted to talk to you, I guess. All right, what's up? I gulped. Darling, if we ever had a wedding, you wouldn't walk out, would you? I heard her laugh for a moment, which worried me before she said. Of course not. I love you, and I thought I've already made that clear. I smiled. That's good. So, anything else you want to talk about, or did you just want to ask me that? Um, can we stay on the phone till I fall asleep? Of course, babe. I wouldn't mind that at all. I smiled once more. So, what were you dreaming about? Well... Tamakyamajiki. I was surrounded in a void of smiles, wondering where the heck I was. I noticed Wyatt in the middle of those smiles. Her arms chained to the floor as she tried to move or fly away. I tried to walk towards her, but it felt like the ground was quicksand, and every step I took made me sink a little. I noticed two figures walk up to Wyan. They looked like her parents, and they unchained her, picking her up by the arms, and started to drag her away. I tried to move quicker, but the faster I moved, the more I felt like I was sinking till I couldn't see anything but darkness anymore. I woke up in fear, looking over the sleeping, relaxed my aunt. I couldn't help but think about my dream, and saw her relationship with her parents was from something I saw it was. Maybe it was for telling me something. I asked myself. I sighed and laid back down, pulling her closer to me. Not having her lay on my chest. I struck her hair as she cut closer to me. I was questioning whether or not to ask her about this in the morning, but I sighed against that. Since I didn't want to pry, I wrapped my arms around her and pulled her even closer, kissing her temple. As I started, drifting off to sleep, stroking her head to not only try to keep her asleep, but to help myself relax. I didn't end up having that dream again, but it was nice having her beside me, just in case. Thank you guys for listening. This was a very, 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 very long video. They're about 10 characters. They were 10, character, 10, char 10 characters, right? Yup, 10 characters. It was very hard. Seriously, it hurts my throat. But I'm just about to do this another other video, and then uh, I'm gonna go to the French online class. It hurts. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for listening. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Bye.